Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from sortofinteresting.com I've got to keep it down because it's very late at night and I don't want the neighbours to hear me shouting my own name at the camera. So, basically, I just thought I would do a nice quick video just talking about one of the things I absolutely love. And this is something that I've talked about going back years and years and years. You can find really old videos on this channel of me the best part of a decade ago, talking about astronomy. Now, some of you may know that now that I'm off Narrowboat Tilly and back on dry land and all the rest of it, that obviously I've got a, a lot more light pollution to deal with than when I was out on a boat in the absolute middle of nowhere. So the one feature that I absolutely love about this place, and I'll post a link to a guided tour of this general place in the description, but Above the bed, there are two skylights in the roof, and we're way up in the top floor of a beautiful big old building here. So I literally lie in bed and look up and just have these little windows that one of them is right above my head, basically, where I've got the bed set up at the moment. So I literally lie back and look straight up into the night sky, and you're just above some of the... Well, you don't have any lights actually shining down on you because we're so high up here. We're not... We're on the dark side of town, but we're still in the town, if that makes sense. So it's not the most light pollution free area. But just having these moments where your eyes are really getting used to the dark. And if I wake up in the middle of the night, which is what I want to talk about, what inspires me to do this video, that you wake up in the middle of the night, your eyes are obviously really well adjusted to the dark, so you look up and can see a lot more stars than if I was going to go out and look off the balcony now after being dazzled by these lights here. So anyway, I woke up at half two in the morning a couple of nights back, and I looked up and I just saw this perfectly framed by the window constellation, one of my favourite constellations, just saw not quite perfectly framed, that's a lie, sorry, but I saw enough stars of the big W of Cassiopeia, which is either a big W or a big M, depending on which way you want to look at it. And that's one of my favourite constellations, and it was one of those moments where, because it was so late and I was in that bit of a daze as you first wake up, you know how you generally are if you wake up randomly in the night, and it's like, what, what's going on? And just looking up and seeing that, it was just that, wow, what's going on here? We're like, we've left all of the beautiful countryside and boat life and everything behind us yet. Hang on, I'm literally in bed looking straight up at the stars. And it was just, it was just one of those perfect moments that made me just want to run outside like it was the old days when I'd literally just, the urge would take me and I'd just head out either from the boat or back in the old, old days when I used to live with my mum. And I just head out down the towpath, head out out of town wherever I was with a blanket and sometimes literally just take a blanket, no telescope, nothing and just go and lie down somewhere and just look straight up at the stars. And Cassiopeia in particular is one of my favourite constellations because there's so much in it. If you point a small telescope up at it, then you'll start to see in that general area of sky thousands and thousands of stars that the naked eye can't pick up and that is just a magical thing to see and there's all sorts of little clusters and that dotted around there just beautiful sight I always describe it as if somebody's got a piece of black paper and poured pepper over it that it's that sort of you can just see there's so many little dots and stuff behind the more prominent ones that you can see or mingled in with the prominent ones rather and it's just a beautiful sight, so like I say, seeing that while lying in bed and just, well, not having to do anything or go anywhere, and then having all these memories start to come back of the times where I'd literally head out in the middle of the night, sometimes I'd head out after midnight and go out and then come back in at ridiculous hours of the morning, and I'd literally just walk out of town, maybe it'd be 20 to 40 minutes trip, depends on where I was heading off to, Sometimes I'd take my telescope and it'd be covered in ice because it'd be that freezing cold out there. But nice cold nights mean very clear skies. And I've got so many of these memories from these different places. Like I've always talked about a place called Middleton Pool where I'd literally just go 
take me backpack, a little blanket, and just lie on a little jetty on the edge of a pond in the middle of nowhere and just watch the shooting stars. And shooting stars are far more common than you might think. It's just the fact that when you're in a light polluted area and you're not spending hours looking up, it's, there's a lot of them that you'll just totally miss or will be drowned out by the light pollution. Whereas when you go out into the middle of nowhere and particularly like me when I was living on the boat, when I'd be cycling to and from work in the small hours of the morning or night, depending again on how you wanted to look at it, I'd see so many shooting stars just as a natural part of my commute if I'd been in work till 10 o'clock and then was heading out and getting back to the boat sort of any time towards, I don't know, between 11 and midnight. Just being out for that amount of time under the clear dark skies, you'd start to see these shooting stars zip across and some of them would be the faintest thing in the world, others would be the most incredible, I mean, sometimes there's certain types of meteors that will leave just for a split second, they'll zip really quickly and they might stick if you're lucky and be visible for a good distance across the sky. But some of them leave just for that split second, a fiery trail like, and you can just see a quick line across the entire sky and just beautiful things that, again, it's the sort of thing that you would see in a film almost and think, God, that never happens in real life. But again, I'm not really sure what the point of this video was, but ultimately I just wanted to say I quite like astronomy still. One of my other favourite places to go would be to head out to Old Dosser Street Hill Fort, which is literally an Iron Age hill fort. And you just think, what is going on in life? I mean, I was up there yesterday. I'll, I'll put some images of it on the screen now, hopefully. But there's just this incredible thing and this incredible moment when you think, I've literally in the past gone out into literally a thousands and thousands of years old Iron Age hill fort that's all carved into this hill up and down with rings of defence and stuff still clearly visible and literally just gone out to an Iron Age hill fort, lay on my back with a, my backpack underneath my head, stayed there for maybe half an hour and just watched shooting stars zip across the sky and sometimes you'd go out and you wouldn't see anything, you'd just see a few satellites and then other times you would see these incredible things of, well, just huge, well, th these amazing burning pieces of space rubble zipping across the sky. Anyway, astronomy, I quite like it. And I don't know what on earth my intention was or what I was thinking this video was going to be, but it's getting very late. It is now, I have no idea what time it is, to be honest, somewhere between midnight and one o'clock. But... I'll say thank you so much for tuning into this random ramble. Thank you so much for any time you've ever spent watching any of my videos. Check the links in the description for my Boat Life books, Facebook page, Facebook profile, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, all that sort of stuff. Have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic night. Keep watching the skies. Keep it interesting. And of course, farewell.